I wish for this video I could sip some wine, but it is 5.30 a.m. So, I mean, I could if I'd work from home today. I totally could, but uh, I do have to drive to work, so unfortunately I can. All right. You know what? I hate trends. Like... We're talking about the tomato girl makeup, the cherry girl makeup, the clean girl makeup, latte makeup, what else? Strawberry makeup, was there something else? I don't know, but I decided when we can do like makeup trends now named after food and drinks and state of dirt, why not do wine girl makeup? And for the wine girl makeup, we're basically using the Beauty Bay Berries. This is the 42 pen version. Let's just peek inside. Look at this beautiful color story. I just love these palettes so much. And I thought while we do this, because I will do like full face of shit, let's just talk about um, new posts on the Beauty Guru chatter. Oh. Fuck this Monday. I'm awake since uh, 4 a.m. and I have dropped so far my curling iron, my um, my toothbrush, the toothpaste, and now the lid of the paint pot. What the fuck? Uh, no, but I thought let's just chat a bit more about the Beauty Guru chatter subreddit on a couple of posts because there is apparently a bit going on there. By the way, I'm still blocked, so they never unblock me there. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I talked about this in the first video. Literally called, I got blocked on the Beauty Guru subreddit. Basically for self-promotion. And if you hear scratches, this is my cat who desperately wants to come in, but he's not allowed in this room. I just applied some MAC Pain Really Pain Bot. And if you feel like catapulted back to 2016, where every single YouTube Make a video started with, oh, we are using Mac Paint Really Paint Pot. Um, welcome, you successfully time traveled. Just kidding, I did a brand review on Mac, and for that brand review, I actually ordered the paint pot since I never used this when I was younger. So I took the video as an excuse to finally try out Paint Pot, and to be honest, I like it. I really do like the paint pot. There are in general a couple items from MAC that I really enjoyed using and I'm gonna link you the video somewhere here so that you can check it out if you have vent already. So let's get into the first post and that reads <sighs> Hannah Louise Poston's Patreon. I enjoy watching Hannah Louise Poston sometimes. Is subscribing to her Patreon worth it? What kind of content does she put up there? Unfortunately this post has no answer, so I can't tell you if it's really worth it or not. I myself um, unsubscribed from Hannah Louise Poston, actually not too long ago. And the reason for that being is very, very simple. I just don't agree on her views of things. And I just, um, as of today, saw a video she uh, posted, like uh, my maternity leave or something, and I'm like, you're a fucking YouTuber. What kind of maternal leave do you need? Like, I don't want to sound disrespectful and I think everybody who is having a child should, of course, spend as much time as possible, not, not only with a newborn child. Like, you know, I, I don't want to have kids, but I, I can't imagine like that as a stressful time. Like, again, don't want to be disrespectful, but at the same time, I just recently saw a TikTok video <laughs> where somebody was like ranting about the loss of connection of influencers. And I have to strongly agree on that because sometimes when I see those videos, for example, or, or not, not videos on Instagram, they're like posting in their stories. Um, and I'm, I'm basically just um, copying that now from the TikTok, what she was saying. But I, again, I have to agree on that. Oh, today's to-do list, getting the nails done, going to the gym, edit two videos. And I'm like, you know what? I work full time. I get up at 3.30 a.m. sometimes, film two to three videos, start editing them before work. Then I go eight hours to my workplace to finish editing like at 5 p.m. 
And then I still want to have like free time, time with my husband, time for hobbies. Uh, I do play piano, I try to do this. I also do sports sometimes. If I'm not tired as fuck and I'm like, you know what? Some of them really lost connection to real life, especially when they never had a real like full-time job that was exhausting as shit. And as that one uh, on TikTok said, you know what, girl, this is not a busy Tuesday. This is for some people a lazy Saturday. Like they truly lost connection. And I did not see the full video. Uh, from, again, I don't watch Hannah Louise Poston anymore. So where's my fucking spoolie? Here it is. I'm kind of back to the uh, AVH brow freeze, but I, I basically use only a quarter of the gel that I used to use and that works a bit better, but I feel like something is missing when I don't use it. It's very weird. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, the loss of connection. And when I saw this video, I was like, you're acting like you're working like 10 hours a day and now you need some serious break. Again, I don't want to sound disrespectful, but um, basically that opinion kind of set in my head after I saw Angelica Ninquist's uh, new makeup releases. He does that like, I think every Friday or every Saturday, something like that. And in that video, she just basically um, said that she was pre-filming since she's uh, going on a trip to Disney with a bunch of other like YouTubers. And she was like, yeah, this is my 11th day uh, in a row working. Don't want to sound disrespectful, but if YouTube was my full-time job, 11 day of working is like 11 day of vacation. I'm sorry, but, and I kind of think that she should know this because she's coming from retail she used to work as a makeup artist she used to work in like real jobs when have you lost connection to the real life so bad probably a lot of people would disagree but you know me i don't care so that's my opinion and again i'm not disrespectful this is just the point of view of a person who does youtube besides full-time work and i want to stress that once more I also study, so I do a nearly full-time um, study too, so... When the fuck do I sleep again? Oh, <laughs> I don't. That's that, that's the secret. I just fucking don't. Okay, here's another post from Hannah Louise Poston. Congrats on your precious baby. Hannah has an old mom and her baby Felix, blah, blah, blah. It's the cutest. Strongly disagree. Babies are ugly. I'm sorry to your moms. You know what? I'm not sorry because I, I just... They're like wrinkly and, and wet and slimy and no thanks. Um, but somebody commented, I thought it was to give herself a break on her last month of pregnancy. Like workers do not that her baby had arrived already. She's very hardworking. Okay, first of all, I want to take back like the maternity leave that I compared to the maternity leave of workers uh, earlier. I thought the same. So basically she already had her baby and is now giving herself a two month break after having the baby. And you know what? It is, it is still fine. Like, don't get me wrong, but she's very hardworking. I'm sorry, but you're literally sitting in front of the camera talking shit to people. And um, of course it's a, it's a time consuming thing. Don't get me fucking wrong. Like I underestimated that so, so much when I thought of doing this, but again, <laughs> You lost a bit of touch with reality. I see this every time when I see a video from Teresa that because I was truly convinced that she's also a full-time YouTuber, but she clearly isn't. She, she has a corporate job still and she does both. And I don't even know why, because I think she might make good money. She's like around 70 or 65,000 subscribers, has a lot of codes a lot of stuff that she could make money off. So, okay, do whatever you want, girl. But let's go into the wine makeup. And, and you know what? I'm a fan of red wine. So that's why we probably are going to use a few of the pink reds, but mostly we will stay in that purple lilac -y row because I love a deep red wine. And if you, if you don't know how to start on wine. I highly recommend educating yourself on your local wine um, kind of versions that you have. So for example, Germany has, I think like 16 different uh, wine regions and they're 
all like super stunning. So I'm starting the look with this lilac shade that is called Manicure. And I'm applying this as transition shade. And no, it is uh, fully a coincidence that this look is matching my hair again. <laughs> All right, so the next pose, did anyone catch this? I'm so excited to have the party favorite palette and have been dying something trying similar from MDK. I wish this was all in the same palette though. Okay, they're just basically talking about the new um, Moon Dust palettes that will be coming where we still don't have a date, I think. Yeah, I, I don't think there is a release date. But I talked about this in my You Don't Need That Shit video where I was like, yeah, I, I'm really tempted to buy this because I like this um, like compilation of those moon dust shadows. I never tried them though because I don't like the single versions in like a single container. But having them in like a four pan palette, uh, love that. And there are two versions of that. So when they were released, I probably get both. And by the way, can that fucking bird please shut the fuck up? We have fall. Why are you still here? And then we have a post about Flower Nose, if that it's, is really worth the money. If you don't know what Flower Nose is, it's basically one of those Korean brands that are very aesthetic, but all of this is just a wash of fucking color and in my opinion, a waste of money. So now going into the shade, this is called Distance. Take a bit of a smaller blending brush and I think you know what I'm going to say, we're going to deepen up that color. I'm a bit on the fence if I want to use glitter today because there are very pretty metallics in this palette but nothing can beat a glitter. I love just my glitter gels from Lemonhead LA or from um, Slay Fire Cosmetics. They're just there. They do slay. They slay the shit out of my face sometimes. Continuing the discourse of this trend and then there's a screenshot. Hailey Bieber debuts darker cinnamon cookie butter hair color just in time for fall. It's a fucking brown hair color with a couple of caramel highlights. What is this generation? Like, can you please answer me that? Why do we have to name everything? What is my hair color name? Because it's like, I don't know, how can we call this? My roots are purple, the rest of my hair is fading into a whitish gray color with a purple undertone. So is there any food that looks like that? Rotten aubergine? I don't know. So I'm now heading into loyalty and I'm going to deepen that plus the outer V even more. And you know how I love just working um, on the face, uh, on the eyes before face because then I can go on really, really messy. To be honest, that is still not dark enough. So uh, I go into this shade. This is called Risk. This is like the deepest purple they have. And I use a dense pencil brush and I just apply this like on the most all apart just to deepen that up. Yeah, do you see the difference between this and this eye? It makes such a big difference just by placing a certain shadow on a very, very certain um, certain spot on the eye. By the way, I do have a quick question for you. Um, as you know, I do have four cats. I said that in a in another video, um, in the assumptions about me thing. And I do have quite a big of a problem currently. So my oldest cat, Edgar, he is um, about four and a half years old. We got him when he was like 10 or 11 months old and he's kind of a like rescued cat. Like the owner we got him from, she had big problems with him since she was uh, he was fighting with her other cats. But she did not um, had him since he was a kitten. She also rescued him from somewhere else where he was probably very, very badly treated. Then we have Inge, she is the like second oldest and uh, we have uh, Hermione, she's like the third. And Edgar and Hermione are constantly fighting since eight or nine weeks or so and I have no fucking clue why. We're talking about true harassing her, like she's on the toilet and she's basically just doing her stuff. And he sits in front of that fucking toilet, stares her to death. Sometimes he even attacks her while she's there. 
Then um, out of nowhere, like she's walking somewhere and then he is attacking her. She's already hissing and growling at him, but he does not care. He's always on, 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 on. And I truly don't know what to do anymore because I have no freaking clue what happened between them. Because when she was a kitten, she even slept aside him. Like they were like the best friends ever. And all of a sudden that changed and I have no idea why. We have enough toilets, enough food, enough water, enough sleeping places. We have high cat trees with a lot of high places where everybody can sleep in peace. I don't know what to do anymore. So if you have any like helpful tip, let me know. I'm now going into royal and I apply this on top of the darkest part. There are so many great shades in these Beauty Bay palettes. I'm, I'm literally fainting right now. I have to use Stiletto because this is a like burgundy lighter red, but it has uh, like holographic glitter to it. Or is it an overspray? No, it's, it's all the way through. So of course I have to use this. And I apply that in the center. Oh, fuck me. The holographic glitter kind of disappears, but the shade itself is really, really pretty. It needs a bit of building. So this is one of the like older metallic formulas that is not as creamy as impactful. Sips, sip some shit. No, I'm, I'm sipping water. And of course there's cat hair on my fucking straw. What else? Okay, Hailey Bieber and her cinnamon cookie butter hair color. Like I said it in another like we don't need a shit video. I just hate Hailey Bieber. She's not a role model. She's not even aesthetically pleasing at all. She is... Mm -mm. The only thing I, I want to point out is the way that her husband, like if you didn't know, it's Justin Bieber. The way he's kind of behaving is giving me weird vibes. Like I have seen the videos on her uh, release shit, whatever, from her dumb ass lip trauma bomb crispy cream whatever strawberry shit um i'm also now going into freeze and you know she was like totally up in theme made up with a red dress red shoes and all that strawberry shit and he was wearing like i think a hoodie and looked super weird and i'm like First of all, why you as his wife, do you let him go out like this? And second of all, why you as a husband are not supporting your wife? Like that does not matter who she is. It's just so disrespectful. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe there is a reason to that, that we all don't know. Maybe we don't see the bigger picture. Maybe it's all just trolling media, who knows? So I just scrolled a bit through this up and there were a couple posts on the new Merit Shadows and how uh, some creators just gave them kind of a good review, but without any like uh, enthusiasm, 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 I think is correct. You know what I mean. And one of them, or like both that were mentioned were Ali Glines, which I don't watch her anymore. And Kali Gooch, I also don't watch her anymore. Like I'm still subscribed to her, but I just watch her occasionally. And that had me thinking like, what happened to like OG beauty YouTube where people were like either super duper, like not impressed, but they were passionate about what they do. And I do miss that. That's one of the reasons why I started doing that shit. By the way, I'm using the Lisa Aldrich um, Seamless Skin Elevated Glow stuff that I just recently bought. And I have to say, first of all, I was a bit shocked that this is only 50 mil. I thought for the price I'm getting 30, but it's of course my fault. I did not read it correctly, but 50 mils, it's, a, it's not a lot. Like, could be also test size. But I'm pretty sure the way I use it is not the way that she intends it to, or is it? I think I saw some, uh, like, how to apply this all over the face and not only on the high points. But this is just one of those underpainting glow primers that I will use all over the face. And it's okay. 
I think it's very, very sheer. I think it's actually not even close to the glow that she's marketing with this. But maybe I'm using it wrong. Let me know if you have this. By the way, you have no idea how hungry I am. But when I have to drive to the office, I definitely do not eat in the morning. I will eat when I'm in my office. We have a very funny post about the khaki um, reviews beauty collab with Ferdinand, I think is the, the brand's name. I never heard of them before because <laughs> the whole collection has been out um, of uh, 20 days. <laughs> uh, what the fuck? That's a bit short, I think, even for a limited edition. Finding Ferdinand is the company. Um, so I went in, in, into the comments um, because it's like 78 comments on there. And people are like wondering why a brand is basically stopping a collab after 20 days because some of them pointed out like what if people are really interested in this and just wanted to wait till next payday you know to to afford one or two of the shades and somebody was like well maybe it didn't sell the other one was like maybe it did sell too well and they didn't want to restock uh, one said that actually nobody has gotten their order yet, like um, they did buy from the website but nothing has uh, shipped out. To be honest, if it was not for this post, I totally would have forgotten what the fuck she launched. I think it was cream blushes or so in like different shades but also different color depths so that... Um, like strawberry colored blush or a peach blush or whatever can show up on a darker skin tone, which I want to give her that. I like that because she, I think, is like a studied artist or something. And she just, she knows the, like the the connection between uh, shade, hue, depth, chroma and all that shit. And if you want to understand that too, uh, I don't know when this video is going to be up, but in my beginner's guide, about um about foundations we are exactly talking about this so it's a good thing what she did want to give her that but other than that i think she is one of the most annoying persons on the internet like i'm sorry that i have to say it like that but i just i dislike her so much and i used to like her because i really loved her very very long get ready with me where she basically just talked about different things just like I do because it was a style of video that I prefer to watch actually but then I don't know I, I got kind of a weird vibe in some of those videos because she was literally in every video talking about astrology and to be honest that's just dumb bullshit people who believe that their day, their life, their year is determined by the way certain stars were aligned in the sky on their day and time of birth. You know, I do believe in things like your own destiny. Is that destiny pre-made when you were born? Absolutely not, because you are the owner of your destiny and you can change that every single day by every decision you make. Even the decision that I eat now or don't eat is changing my whole fate, destiny, whatever you want to call it. But she seemed to be so obsessed with astrology, birth signs, and the way the moon is going up and down, it, it, it just got really ridiculous. And that was part of the reason why I unfollowed her. And then I saw what happened with her and the drama around her. And all I could think of was, holy fuck, what's wrong with this girl? And if you didn't catch the drama, um, let me read that off how it was exactly. Uh, she made an IG story about the woman shop owner who was killed because she had progressive signage at her shop. Kaki said, this could have been me because she was a free spirit like that slain woman. Um, first of all, it's a very bold move to repost kind of news of a killed person and then make this about yourself. Like, isn't that a bit narcissistic? Like, just saying. Not diagnosing as she does. 
And if you don't know what I mean, I think there was also a YouTube video where she basically just armchair diagnosed people or like was telling you how to armchair diagnose narcissistic behavior. And I'm like, okay. Doctor, that's uh, that's a bold move basically. I was also just getting like super annoyed by the way she criticized colors and she was always mocking up that, oh, I'm an artist and I know about chroma and hues and I am the only one who can identify an undertone. I'm like, what the fuck? You did not invent color. Like, calm down, calm your tits or calm at least one tit. She's just giving off a very, very unhealthy vibe, kind of. All right, if you have seen my brand review on MAC, I there tested out the chroma case, the chroma case the curve case from Made by Mitchell the very first time. And I wanna dig back in because the shade collectible was so fucking green on me, I did not like this at all. So let's try some of the other shades. So this is hollow there. I do have this already in a liquid version, so I know how this looks, but I wanna use um, Shady Business over here because the other one looks too red. That could, that could be a nice blush maybe, but let's just try now Shady Business and see how this works as my contour. Oh, way too warm. Oh, that looks actually like shit. So let me just cover that up with a sponge. You know what? Um, I don't really like this. Let me just give it one last try with hollow there because I just know that the shade does work on me. Yeah, much better, much, much better. So mainly these contour shades do not work for, for me, even though this is the light shade, but I like the blushes and I will use um, Snatural today. Even though for this wine girl makeup look, probably my Project Pan blush, um, Jouer Be Loud can work too, but I wanna use that one because I wanna just try this out even more. Okay, that's that's very intense. It's more of a reddish blush, even though it does not look as red in the pan. I have a feeling that this day is going to be horrible. Let me just apply some of the Jouer blush on top because this is way too warm now. I hate my makeup very much today, but um, we can save it still. I think you could probably tell already, but I am also not religious, so I don't believe in anything that has to do with um, religion and God and stuff. I do believe that there are other forms of life somewhere out there in the universe because us um, humans thinking that we are the only living species out there in this whole fucking universe is it's it's just arrogant, uh, but I don't believe in God. I respect actually the the need of believing in something like God, but I don't I don't understand the way it's executed in this world. Like this strong, sometimes extremist way of believing in something and trying to shove that down somebody's throat. That is just not what I what I like about this word. By the way, um, the curve case, as of for now, is decluttered, like this is bullshit. But we can still save this makeup by finishing now the eye look and by doing then powder products. I also don't understand how these shades just look completely different, so like, um, even though hollow there worked good for me, it is nothing like the liquid version. I on purpose, by the way, skipped the long post about the Jaclyn Hill thing. So she, if you are not uh, in the game of Jaclyn Hill, um, Marlena Stell from Formal Makeup Geek and uh, I don't know what her name is. Um, from Gerard Cosmetics, the owner. They basically just spoke out finally loud what Jaclyn Hill did to, them, did to them, and now I'm going into the shade journal. And they, like, they, they 
they knew no limit. Like they were completely honest, bashing her. Um, they were providing screenshots and all that shit. Oh, by the way, I'm using this two line, oh, not two line, to press it into the lower lash line. And now Jaclyn Hill finally addressed that also on Reddit and somebody <laughs> made the screenshot of this post and first of all the comments are hilarious like um, somebody wrote the way I just got a stroke by seeing <laughs> this um, yeah I'm not reading this but basically she of course explained herself um, and if you want to know the whole story I highly recommend checking out the channel Tea Spill. She already did a video about the Jacqueline um, like answer to this but I haven't watched it yet but I'm pretty sure it's it's all in one video so you don't have to read that long post. Going into the shade Rosewood and <laughs> I'm just currently <laughs> re-watching Pretty Little Liars. I still stand by what I said in one of the videos that I did that um, I don't understand the hate or the predator comments toward the relationship between Aria and Ezra. Uh, first of all, um, they're not real. It's fiction, so no reason to um, to freak out like some people do. But I also like their relationship. Like, was it kind of wrong? Yes, but um, again, I, I see it. Like they they knew themselves before the school starts. We're not talking about the whole Ezra's writing a book about her and that bullshit. Um, I don't know. I don't have a problem with that. The age gap is not as much. By the way, age gap, when we're just about ranting, um, somebody's getting a divorce. I think Sophie Turner and some of the Jonas guys, I don't know who she was married to. And one of the like reactions that I saw on TikTok was like, oh yeah, but when they started dating, she was um, 16 or 17 and he was a uh, 23 of course this marriage did not work out like what the fuck this is a completely fine age gap in my opinion actually i don't even know if that is true like the age gap between them because i literally couldn't care less but i'm now going into the shade cloud here but again that age gap is perfectly fine it's seven or maybe eight years who the fuck cares I'm using this now as my inner corner highlight. Oh, that is beautiful. It's like a holographic multi-chrome. Ooh, that's pretty. Let me just tell you, if you like shades like this in the berries and in the pink, highly recommend it. Beauty Bay has an awesome quality. I love these eyeshadows so, so much. But I wanna use some glitter today, so. I do want to stay in the purple vibe, so Slay Fire is actually not giving me purple. So we have to use something else. So I could use this shade. This is Mirage from Slay Fire Cosmetic. That shifts purple and gold. Yeah. Or Happy Ending or Lady Mercury. Oh, they're also beautiful. If you've never used any glitter gel, um, you're truly missing out in my opinion because even though I don't use them every day, I still love these palettes. And I have two, no, three of them. But I decided to go in with Lady Mercury because it has some bigger and some smaller glitter spacks. And I just apply this on top of my inner corner and take this a bit into the crease. I basically just use this to layer and to give off a nice effect when I turn my hat because sometimes I do move my hat. Have you, by the way, um, seen the streamies or seen who won? I'm specifically talking about the makeup creator category and I was a bit, let's say I was a bit surprised on the fact that um, Michaela won, Michaela Neguera, because she had like the biggest lying scandal in beauty history and they awarded her for being the best creator of this year. That sends so many false messages, I, I, I can't. Um, I'm using the MAC Studio Fix Pro Set and Blur because I want to test out this powder further. I really liked this the first time I used it. The only thing I 
don't like is actually the puff that it comes with. But my own puff is actually dirty, so we're using a brush. This powder is so freaking fine. I think that is my main problem with it. It's too fine. Um, and it actually smells like shit pants, as we're talking about uh, <laughs> lying people. I said in one of my You Don't Need That Shit videos um, that the REM sweetener foundation is something that nobody asked for and we probably don't need. But I saw some reviews and I was like, fuck me, that looks actually really good. And when I saw it on Angelica Ninquist's skin, um, I was like, oh, fuck me. That looks super nice. And she has like matured skin, like she has very beautiful skin, of course, but you know, I, I like seeing foundations on like skins that are in my age range. And she's a bit older than me, but of course that is like a nice way to see a foundation working. Okay, I forgot to powder like this part of my face. Um, so I, I bought it. I haven't tried it yet because when you, when I filmed this, it um, did not came to my house. But when you see this, I probably have already tested it, maybe even uploaded something, I don't know. I actually struggled already by finding the right shade because um, the shade system, I, I just don't understand. Usually I'm in every foundation like the lightest or second to lightest shade, but in the REM, um, I'm the shade nine. Why in the face concealer or like the, the concealer, uh, the pot, this one, I'm shade 6N and for the foundation, the website told me 9NG. I don't know, neutral golden, I think it is, which could be bright, but nine seems to be a bit dark. So I'm very curious if that will match. So let's do some contour work and I'm going into the Hollywood. Is it called Hollywood? No, the film star bronze and glow, even though this is not like a True, true contour shade in my opinion. It has some warmth to it, but it it is nice. I like this. For the blush, we're heading into Letha Cosmetics and this is the shade uh, Pansy. And if you have ever used Letha Cosmetics blushes, you know, don't swirl your brush. Gently tap. That is more than enough. I just try to basically save whatever is going on on my cheek currently and to make it very monochromatic with the eye. And I also apply this always on like the brow bone part. Yeah, I think that works. Now something on the nose and we're good to go. Since this blush is so highlighty, I am also using the highlight shade from the Film Star Bronze and Glow because this is a little bit more subtle. I usually would have used a monochromatic highlight for this, maybe um, from the Noctilucent palette from Lent Bunny Cosmetics. They do have a purple highlight, but so we are going to use more of my project pan items. I also found the post on the Beauty Guru thing um, that, you know, fun fact, I talked about this actually in a video, but I decided when I edited the video to uh, remove this part because I had the feeling that what I said there sounded a bit bratty But now that I read it on the um, Reddit sub, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. If you think I'm bratty, then you think I'm bratty. I couldn't care less But it's about YouTubers or content creators in general bringing out reviews way, way, way too soon. And I was in my video, what I edited out, specifically talking about Morgan Turner. Even though she usually comes back after like two months or so and does her speed reviews, where she is basically just recapping on all the stuff that she tried. And I like that format, like I usually, don't watch her first impressions. I do watch her speed reviews. Even though I have to admit, sometimes I'm not sure how true these speed reviews are because she has one face only. And she is also wearing makeup for her videos that come in a very regular basis. Like when the fuck is she testing these items? But I don't wanna assume something or just 
spread a rumor that she does not have it because I don't know the way she works. Um, I only can imagine from my part and how I work that I could not do this the way she does, but again, it's all up to her. But what I criticized basically is that she did a review on the Tower 28 concealer and she basically titled the video like the best concealer ever. And first of all, I know, of course, this is clickbait. You are, you are supposed to click on a title like that. But again, it, it makes me very biased when I watched this video. It makes me actually think like, okay, you tried this concealer once, girl, and now you're telling me this is the best concealer you ever tried. Like, test it out. And the Reddit post is basically just talking about that, not in specific about Mom Turner, but about the fact that um, content creators are putting out their reviews way, way, way too early or not labeling that. For example, in my MAC video, I tested out a couple items from MAC the very first time. Like, for example, the Studio Radiance Foundation, the new one. And I said like three or four times that upon my first impression, I like it. Upon my first impression, it's a fucking awesome foundation, but I have to test it further. Let me just quick set my makeup. I'm using the Milk Makeup um, Port Clip Spray. When it comes to eyeshadows, I think first impressions are completely fine because I, myself, I can tell upon first application whether I like an eyeshadow, I don't like an eyeshadow, or if I'm indecisive about it. For example, when I tested last year the Nomad Cosmetics, um, what's it called? Winter's Night? No, Christmas Night? Christmas Lights? They had a limited edition Christmas palette that was inspired by the Northern Lights in Finland. And when I tested this out, I made an Instagram post being like, oh my God, I like this palette so much, but I have kind of big of a problem with the shivers. Like, I need to test this out further. Now I'm sure um, I don't like this palette. Will I declutter it? No, because I like the theme and the, the color story. But the, the shimmers are shit. When I tested out the Nomad Cosmetics Verona palette, like the Verona Love and Death, I could immediately tell that I don't like the shimmers. Again, because they have like the same texture. So what I want to say is with eyeshadow, again, I do understand that, that you can, that you can like judge an eyeshadow like very quick upon the first application. That is completely understandable. But concealer, primer, foundations, like I even see how you judge a blush after one use. Um, you cannot judge like long wearing time, but I don't even know how important that is because blush, no matter what brand you have, is the first one that is going to fade on your face. It's completely normal and it doesn't matter what brand, they all do it. I can also judge a mascara by one use because I can tell you do I like it or not and if a mascara is working for me after like two months when it's a bit dried up then it's not a good mascara for me because I don't want to like open the mascara and then wait two months for that. I think you know what I mean but this is just something that I I basically um, see too that the reviews are coming so fast and they're like so overly good sometimes or they're very extreme these days. They're either fucking good or fucking bad. Like I did not watch any review on the Tarte Man Eater Nightfall palette because I didn't want to bias myself. But what I saw is two videos with very, very different titles. One was from Morgan Turner, where she was like the best fall palette this year or the best fall palette ever, question mark. And then the video from Patty Alonso, which was in the title, Tart Man in Life or whatever, and why I don't like this palette. I myself am not able to decide whether I like or don't like this palette. And that is what I basically explained in my video because I'm indecisive. You cannot tell me that everybody has such an extreme opinion on makeup. It's it's just impossible. By the way, the lip liner that I'm using is the Sephora Lip Stain Liner in the shade Pink Souffle. I usually don't like these kinds of like twist up liners, but they are fucking good. 
I think a lot of people do sleep on Sephora makeup because Sephora, the Sephora brand is actually good. And you know what really matches the wine girl? Clinique Black Honey Lipstick. Haven't used this in a bit since I had over heels uh, fell in love with the Givenchy Rouge Inter D in the shade 10. This, that is basically a bit more intense uh, than Black Honey in my opinion. But I just love these kind of lipsticks. Talking and applying lipstick is always a good idea. All right, so that's it for the <laughs> wine girl makeup. What do we think? Um, I actually think that could, um, I can improve this makeup look a bit more if we want to stay in this like very monochromatic vibe and maybe really get inspired by the color of wine, then I should definitely add more of a dark red and burgundies, but I think this is a good start. You can always add liner, but I do have a tiny, again, small infection on my eye. If you remember that from a video, it's called in Germany Zugbekommen. And somebody commented how this is called in English and I totally forgot it. For, I, I completely lost it, so please tell me again what this is called when you have this. And tell me, how do you feel about the topics that I just talked about? Are you, in my opinion, do you disagree? If you do disagree, please let me know down below. But don't forget, we are a very respectful community here, so we can discuss certain things without insulting people. And don't forget to check out like Infobox because there's the link to Instagram and TikTok and where you can support this channel other than by subscribing because if you subscribe, I'm very, very thankful for that and I will see you in the next one.